Hello everyone, this is a very special video that will be starting the surgical procedure series in which we will go over the basics of multiple general surgery operations. The purpose of this series is not to go over every single step of the surgery, but to learn the basics, the different techniques that are used, and the main goal of the operation. In this first video, we will go over the pyloroplasty. In this picture on the left, we have the esophagus going into the cardia of the stomach, the fundus of the stomach, the body of the stomach, and then finishing in the antrum, and the most distal component of the stomach is the pylorus. The purpose of the pylorus is to properly contract and relax to either prevent the passage of food or facilitate it, so that gastric content can move to the duodenum once it has been properly digested by the stomach. A pyloroplasty is a procedure that widens the opening between the antrum and the duodenum to facilitate the, the passage of gastric contents. So, the purpose of this procedure is to either render the pylorus incompetent or completely bypass it. And this is a procedure that can be done either with an open approach, as you can see in the picture on the left, or laparoscopically, so minimally invasive surgery, as you can see in the picture on the right. Pyloroplasties are simple procedures and have low surgical morbidity and mortality. There are three main techniques that are used, and we'll go over each of them. But before that, we understand that the purpose of this surgery is to render the pylorus incompetent. But what are some of the indications for this to occur? As medicine has evolved, the management of certain conditions has changed. For instance, peptic ulcers used to be treated surgically, but with the use of PPIs and other acid-blocking agents, medical management has become more first-line therapy. However, one of the most common indications for pyloroplasties is still anything that can cause benign gastric outlet obstruction. And typically, this tends to be a complicated peptic ulcer. In gastric outlet obstruction, something is blocking the pylorus, and so gastric contact can't move from the antrum to the duodenum, and therefore a pyloroplasty will help bypass this blockage. Other reasons to perform a pyloroplasty include refractory diabetic gastroparesis, anything that can cause stenosis of the pylorus, such as chronic ulceration, pyloric stenosis, or systemic sclerosis, or you can also see Pyroplasty is used secondary to other operations, such as following vagotomy to ensure adequate drainage, or during operations where uh, there's gastric replacement of the esophagus. As I mentioned before, there are three main techniques used to perform pyloroplasty. So let's briefly go over each of them. The most common technique is called the Heinke Miculix pyloroplasty. This is the simplest and most commonly performed technique. And what happens is the pyloric sphincter is divided longitudinally like this, so you make a longitudinal cut, and then it's closed transversely, like this. So you're effectively widening the opening of the pyloric region with this closure technique. By inverting the closure from longitudinal to transverse, you're effectively widening how big of an opening there is so that the gastric contents can pass from the antrum to the duodenum. The first thing that's done to perform this procedure is to identify the pylorus. And that can be either done visually while when the abdomen is opened or by performing an EGD with CO2 insufflation. So with an endoscope, you can figure out and see where the pylorus is. Once the pylorus has been identified, then typically stay sutures are, pla are placed in the superior edge and the inferior edge of the duodenum by the pyloric level. And this tends to help with the operation and this is when you can make uh, a cut, usually two centimeters, proximal to the pylorus. So you're making an incision in the gastric antrum, you are going through the gastric wall, then you're getting into the lumen, and then you can extend this incision distally, following that longitudinal axis of the bowel. And typically, this incision tends to be about five centimeters. And once the incision has been made, that is the main step of the pyloroplasty. Now all you have to do is, as you can see in this picture here, close the incision in that transverse fashion we just talked about. So this is an appropriate closure to perform when there is no distortion, there is no scarring around the duodenum, and the pyroplasty incision is not too big. So usually around five centimeters, anything less than seven centimeters typically. Moving on to the second technique, this picture here 
show the finny pyloroplasty or the u-shaped pyloroplasty the heinke miculix is a great closure technique for pyloroplasties but if a longer duodenotomy is required in order to obtain proper hemostasis on a bleeding source that is beyond the bulb of the duodenum usually a finny closure of the pylorus is more appropriate and the reason for that is that unlike the heinke miculix the finny closure is a tension-free closure. Simply put, the finny closure is a side-to-side -side gastroduodenostomy. So you're making a connection between the stomach and the duodenum, in which the pylorus is at the cranial apex of the anastomosis, meaning it's at the top. These pictures can be confusing at first, but let's go through them one by one. So in the first picture on the left, all we see is the divided pylorus. Moving on to the next picture, in this picture we see that U-shape we were talking about. So on this side we have the stomach, on this side we have the duodenum, and the pylorus is at the cranial apex as, a, as we talked about. And what's happening is you have this inverted U-shape connection, so this is where the anastomosis is between the stomach and the duodenum. So now we can see that inverted U-shape pyloroplasty. So effectively what's happening is that instead of having that uh, nice simple longitudinal incision like we saw in the high chemiculics you have an inverted u-shaped incision that is longer and is tracking further down into the duodenum another main difference is that the finny is a standard two-layered anastomosis so while the high chemiculics only has one layer of sutures that is being connected this one has two layers so we can see that first layer starting here and that is the inferior edge so in this picture, we have that uh, posterior layer of sutures. And then as you move on to the next pictures, you can better imagine this. You have the posterior sutures uh, you can see in the lumen, and then the other layer of anterior sutures overlying that, closing the pyloroplasty. So instead of just having a simple hole going through connecting that, we have the stomach and the duodenum being brought together in this inverted U-shape and being closed posteriorly and anteriorly to make a new lumen, which becomes the new pylorus, basically. And because of this, nothing really is pulling, so you have a tension-free closure that is helpful in settings like large posterior bleeding ulcers that require large incisions to obtain hemostasis. And now let's move on to the last technique. For the last technique, we have the Jaboulet pyloroplasty. Similarly to the Finney, this is also a side-to-side -side gastroduodenostomy. But instead of having one large incision that's tracking down to the duodenum, we have two incisions. One is made in the antrum of the stomach, and one is made further down distally in the duodenum. What's happening here is that the pylorus is left intact. The pylorus is not touched at all, and all you do is approximate these two incisions. So here we have the stomach incision, here we have the duodenal incision, and here we have the intact pylorus, and all you do is bring those two together and create that anastomosis. In this pyloroplasty, the incision is tracking further down into the duodenum, but instead of having one long incision, you have two. And the indication to use this procedure is during cases in which the pylorus should be avoided. So as you can see in this picture, you have a very uh, inflamed ulcer that wouldn't let you perform a desirable pyloroplasty. So what you do is you left the pylorus intact and you approximate two sides, the stomach to the duodenum so that gastric contact can then just travel from here to here by completely ignoring this part. When I first started talking about pyloroplasties, I said that the intent is to either bypass the pylorus or render it incompetent. The Jaboulet is completely bypassing the pylorus and the Finney and the Heinke Michelix are rendering it incompetent. And let's finish uh, this talk by summarizing all the key points. So we talked about the indications for pyroplasties and the three different techniques that are performed to close the pyroplasties. This image that I have here, I found helpful because it easily highlights all the incision sites. So for Heinke Maculix, we have this initial longitudinal cut that is then closed transversely. So you see the arrows opposing each other, and that is just one layer of sutures. The Finney is a tension-free closure. It's a gastroduodenostomy, and you have a longer incision that is going from the antrum to the duodenum, and you're bringing those two together, and you have two layers of sutures in your anastomosis, making it tension-free. And then lastly, the Jaboulet completely ignores the pylorus 
and just has two incisions, one in the gastric antrum and one in the duodenum that are approximated, bypassing the pylorus and having gastric content move from the stomach directly to the distal portion of the duodenum. So with that, I conclude this video. Thank you for watching. If you got this far, please give this video a like. Comment below with any questions or if you want us to make a video on a different topic. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a future video.